welcome you to Thames River Church this morning. Um, I'm going to start a little earlier just to uh, kind of get it all in and be able to enjoy time with uh, my family this morning. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Jesse Morales, and um, I just want to thank you uh, for joining us this morning. You know, today is a beautiful day. It's uh, sunny outside, and um, we're celebrating Mother's Day, and so uh, it's a, an exciting day. Uh, as you can tell, um, right now, um, we have an empty church. Our church has been empty for uh, well, going on almost two months now, and um, I want you to all know that uh, I miss you deeply. I'm here in my office uh, transmitting this um, by myself. I asked the crew that normally is here uh, with us to spend time with their wives and their mothers this morning. And so this is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, go ahead and get started earlier so that I can also go home and spend time with my wife and with my mother and my family. With that said, I do want to welcome you to our church. Uh, we're glad that you're with us. And like we'd like to say around here, welcome home. One of the reasons why we say or have this phrase is because we want everyone that comes in, in through these uh, doors here at Thames River Church to feel at home. If you have been watching and if you have been blessed by the messages and the uh, singing and the worship, um, when this is all over, we would ask that you would consider coming and joining us. Amen. I also, again, want to uh, wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. You know, mothers are special people. Uh, they are people who spend time, um, tireless time uh, with us when we were uh, growing up, and some still spending the tireless time with their children um, as, as they nurture them and as they raise them. And so we want to thank all the mothers uh, today a happy Mother's Day. I also, uh, before we get started, I do want to uh, ask that if you are watching this morning, if you are watching right now live, that you would tell us where you are watching from and leave it down in the comments. We also would love it if you could uh, share this live stream with your friends and your family, um, if you uh, have been blessed in the uh, previous Sundays, I am sure that you would be blessed. You will be blessed again. And so go ahead and share uh, this live stream. Also, if you have a uh, prayer request, if uh, there's anything you would like prayer for, uh, you can uh, send us uh, your requests in, in different ways. You can either click the link in the comments um, in this live stream, or you can also send it to us through the Facebook uh, Thames River Church message uh, feature. Um, if you have uh, enjoyed our live stream and uh, would care to go ahead and like us on Facebook, that would be awesome. One of the things that would, what, that would happen is by liking us on Facebook, anytime that we are uh, live streaming or uh, during our services, uh, you will be notified. Uh, also, we have uh, a Thames River Church uh, YouTube channel that you can also subscribe to. And lastly, um, we uh, have online giving now available on our website. And if you wish to worship the Lord through your giving, uh, you can do that at uh, www.thamesriverchurch.org. And you can go ahead and uh, uh, give to this ministry uh, if you wish. Now, I, what I'd like to do is go ahead and open up in a word of prayer and, uh, and then enter into worship. We have something uh, a little different today, uh, something that my uh, daughters uh, prepared uh, to lead you in worship this morning, and so I pray that you will be blessed. Let us go ahead and pray and open up. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for your presence here already. Lord, we know that we are not here together in person, Father God, but we know, Lord, that your Spirit 
is with us, Father God. And so, Lord, we thank you that your spirit is with us wherever we may find ourselves this morning, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers. We thank you, Lord, that you chose to give us the mothers that you gave us, Father God. And we asked, Father God, that you would remind us each day to thank them and to care for them, Father God, and to constantly remind them of what an awesome impact they have been in our lives, Father God. I pray, Lord, for those who maybe uh, have uh, something between them, them and their mothers, Father God, and I pray, Lord, that you would restore that today uh, through the preaching of your word, Father God. Lord, have your way in our hearts this morning, Lord. We thank you and we bless you, Lord, and we ask that you would bless this time together around your word as we worship you in spirit and in truth. So now I want to turn over to uh, my daughters here as they uh, will lead us into uh, worship. Jesus, Jesus, you make 
Make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus.
the hill you created The light of the world Abandoned in darkness to die And as you speak
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I guess my microphone was mic'd, uh, or was, I, I mic'd, but it was muted. So what I was saying was that I wanted to thank my daughters um, for the hard work that they put in uh, to, to be able to give this to the mothers as a gift, uh, this uh, for, format of worship. And so I'm very thankful for the work that they did. Um, as we move forward here, I, uh, there's a poem that I want to share with you. I want to share with all the mothers that my wife uh, found online. Um, she uh, was not able to find the, the author, but uh, if it ministers to you, um, please uh, let us know, and she can uh, go ahead and uh, email it to you. And so let me play that before we get into uh, God's Word. Um, and so I just want to play that for you now. Motherhood is more than a stage. It's a lifelong calling from God. With it, he gives us hearts that love deeply. Hands that serve tirelessly and vision to see his blossoming image in the precious ones entrusted to our care. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Therefore, Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a, 
uh, what a message in that poem. Uh, this morning, uh, the word that God gave me uh, for this morning uh, for us to, uh, to encourage the mothers uh, is uh, based around or was inspired by this poem. And um, I find it uh, interesting how uh, the gift that God has given to mothers, and uh, I often think about how a mother uh, is born along uh, with the child that she is giving birth to, uh, at that, that first child that she gives birth to, and, and how uh, there's no manual for a mother, but yet God gives the mother the instinct or the ability uh, to mother her children. And so I, uh, this, this uh, poem really spoke to me, and like I said, um, it inspired me uh, to share this message with you. If you uh, have your Bibles, if you can go ahead and grab them now and uh, join me in, in, in looking into God's Word and, and seeing what God has for us this morning. I'm going to be reading out of uh, Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 26 uh, through 38. I'll be reading um, out of the NIV. So I'll give you some time to... Uh, find that, and um, then we'll go ahead and uh, start reading. Praise God. So, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38, and it reads like this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of, of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this word. She was troubled at this, at this word or at his words, and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36, Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Now the the, the foundation or the verse that I really want to focus on or have us um, uh, uh, keep in, in mind is verse 38. It says, I am the Lord's servant, is what Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Today's message is motherhood, a lifelong call from God. A lifelong call from God. I find it interesting as I was reading this passage because here uh, we have uh, heard the saying, God doesn't call uh, the qualified, but He qualifies the call. And as I thought about uh, Mary and what the Lord uh uh, the message that she received from the angel, from the Lord, uh, it got me thinking, here's a woman 
uh, uh, a teenager when she first hears these words. And uh, what was what, what really uh, inspired me to, to share this message with you was how uh, here's a young girl who, uh, in, 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 even in today's world, uh, was not qualified. She was not qualified. When we look at her and we look at her situation, here she is engaged to be married. She's engaged to be married, and yet uh, God decides to go ahead and uh, give her a child apart from marriage. And this, as we all know, this child is uh, Jesus. And so as, as I thought about this, I thought, you know, God doesn't, qualify, doesn't call those who are qualified, but he qualifies those he has called. And that couldn't be truer of motherhood. We see here in our text a perfect example of this truth. Uh, Jesus was not just any ordinary baby. It's for us to understand that uh, here Mary is, is, uh, is, is told by the angel Gabriel that she is to give birth to this, uh, this child named Jesus and that she's to give him the name Jesus. And we, uh, 2,000 years later, uh, know that this man named Jesus or this baby uh, named Jesus that was born in a manger was to come and, and suffer, uh, endure pain, and, and eventually uh, die on a cross for the sins of many. And so he was the Lamb of God, and he was sent to die as a ransom for many. Mary was about to enter motherhood, and she was about to enter suffering. She was about to enter the cruelty and the rejection of her son. But God called, and He qualified her for this very task. Mary was chosen to enter motherhood, a lifelong calling from God. And like I said, for the next few minutes, on this day, on this Mother's Day, May 10th, I want to consider Mary the mother of Jesus. I want to look at Mary, and I want to look at some things uh, some uh, characteristics or qualities about Mary that uh, I hope you will find in yourself. The first thing I want to look at is that uh, uh, Mary, uh, in verse 38, she says, I am the Lord's servant. So the first thing I want us to consider, the thought is, motherhood is a call to servanthood. It says in verse 38 that Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be, wait, may your word to me be fulfilled. I want us to notice the key phrase Mary uses here. She says, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. Mary never wavered from her call to motherhood. We know that because she says, she says, may your word to me be fulfilled. And so she uh, embraced this calling. She embraced this task. She embraced this position in her life. Was she nervous? Was Mary nervous as she receives this call? Sure she was. Was she unsure of her own abilities? Sure she was. Was she anxious about the part of her future where she would suffer pain? Sure. I believe that every mother is nervous when she first hears the news that she's pregnant. Uh, there may be uh, emotions of joy and excitement, but eventually she will start become, to become nervous. Uh, will I be able to uh, uh, fulfill this task? Will I be able uh, to be a great mother? Um, I'm sure that many mothers are unsure of their, of their own abilities. And how, how, how am I going to provide for this child? I'm sure that many mothers uh, become anxious about uh, the part of, of the part of their future and, 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 and how this changes everything for them and how they're to give their lives now for another. Like all mothers, Mary, the mother of Jesus, endured, endured sitting up late at night. She endured or, or she uh, was uh, 
was was a mother like any other mother who would wake up to uh, to the to as soon as she heard that child cry. I know that my wife, as my children were uh, just born and, and 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 needed more of our care, I, I can remember uh, getting up at the wee hours of the night in order to go and take care of a crying baby. Maybe maybe a baby that was had a wet a diaper or or maybe a uh, uh, hungry and having to sit up at night to to uh, nurse this child and so uh, like all mothers Mary the mother of Jesus endured the same things she late at night would get up and getting little sleep she would get up in order to change and feed her newborn child but that was not the worst of it See, we know what was coming for Mary because we're able to look at uh, from from a different perspective. We're able to look back 2,000 years ago and see how Mary uh, uh, had to suffer much pain. Yet even when it wasn't easy, Mary was fully committed to her calling. You see, I believe that many mothers, no matter how difficult it gets, no matter how difficult it is to raise their children, that they are committed to this calling that we call motherhood. Mary was one who had left no room for commitment to anything else but the upbringing of her child. Motherhood is a lifelong call to servanthood. A mother is called to be committed fully and completely to the Lord as she serves the Lord by the uh, raising up of a child. As she serves her children, she is serving the Lord. Colossians 3, Colossians 3, 23 says, Work willingly, not grudgedly. At whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Yes, a mother uh, nurtures and, and nurses a child and, and looks after a child and serves that child. And yes, they are people, but they are ultimately serving the Lord. You see, a mother is caring for a child, but that child Though that mother gave birth to this child, that child belongs to the Lord. And the mother has been entrusted with this child to take care of this child, to raise this child, to, 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 to raise this child in the admonition of the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 7 says, work with enthusiasm. This word enthusiasm means uh, filled with the Spirit. And it, said, it goes, continues on to say, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And so mothers as servants of the Lord, they work with enthusiasm. They work with excitement and with passion uh, as though they were working for the Lord rather than for people. As I did uh, last, last week, uh, I added a hashtag to each uh, Point. And so to this point here, our first point, I want to give you a hashtag. The hashtag is motherhood is a call to servanthood. Motherhood is a call to servanthood. And so all mothers have been given a task to serve the Lord in the raising of their children. The second thing that I, uh, I want us to consider uh, when we think of Mary is that motherhood is not always perfect or that your call was not a call to perfection your call was not a call to perfection your call was a call to serve and so as I considered this this thought I thought of uh, John chapter 2 verse 1 and 5 and it reads like this on the third day a wedding took place in Can Can Cana in Galilee Jesus's mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding when the wine was gone Jesus's mother said to him they have no more wine I love how Jesus answers his mother he says woman why do you involve me now let me just make this clear Jesus was not disrespecting his mother 
he was showing respect for his mother by calling her woman. And so he says, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. Now look at how Mary responds. Completely uh, uh, not even giving any, uh, any thought or, or any importance to what Jesus was saying, she says, she says to, to, uh, to the servants, she says, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. The point here that I want us to look at is that here is uh, Mary in this wedding. The wine, there's no more wine, and she goes to her son uh, to, to, to help out, uh, to figure out how, um, uh, how to get more wine to the people. Again, let me read verse 4. He says to her, woman, why do you involve me? Why do you involve me? I just came to have a good time, in other words. And he says to her, my hour has not yet come. But I love what, what, how Jesus responds to his mother. We know the story. What Jesus does is he goes and, and, and he has the servants uh, get jars of water and, and he goes and, 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 and turns that water into wine. And we know the story as the wine is now uh, given to the guests and, and, and to the people, uh, the hosts of, of the party, of this wedding. Uh, they're, they're, they're amazed that this wine is better than the wine that they had before. Again, as we look at this, we see that Jesus says to Mary, He says, my hour has not yet come. But yet Mary says, completely ignores what Jesus says, and says to His servants, do whatever He tells you. I don't know about you, but as I look at this, I see that that, that, that Mary uh, made Jesus to do something at an, an, un, an unopportune time. It, it was not the opportune time for her to, to, to ask or make this request. And so this is where uh, I want to encourage mothers by telling you that motherhood is not a call to perfection. Here Mary uh, missed uh, uh, the mark. Uh, she fell short. But here's the good news. The good news is that you are not called to perfection, but you're called to serve. I believe that even though this may look like Mary uh, got ahead of herself, that God the Father used this as an opportunity to display His Son, to let those in this, in this wedding know who Jesus was. For he was the Son of God, but he also was the Son of Man. So despite the fact that, that she was the mother of Jesus, Mary wasn't perfect. She wasn't perfect. When Jesus performed his first miracle here, Mary's conversation is the most unusual part of the water turned into wine. Jesus again says to her, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. In other words, Jesus was saying, Mom, Mom, really? It's not my time yet, Mom. How many of your children have said that to you? Mom, really? Now you're asking me to do this? I know with my children, oftentimes when my wife will ask my son, Hey, you need to go upstairs and pick up your room. And he's in the middle of a game or, or whatever activity he's engaged in. He says, Mom, really? Now you want me to go do that? And oftentimes, uh, uh, he, he gets up and he goes and does what mom said. Why? Because mom has made a request. Amen? And so I want us to think of, this, of the awkwardness of this situation. Mary's request was, was, was out of line. It was, it was not the right timing. It was an imperfect request. Yet Jesus honored his mother and performed the miracle. That was not the only time that Mary uh, made an imperfect request or, or uh, didn't uh, choose the right time to ask Jesus for something. As I thought about this, uh, I, I was reminded of the time when Jesus was still talking to the crowd in Mark chapter 3, verses 31 and 34. Here, uh, uh, 
in the passage, it says that a crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Let, let, me, let me read that passage to you. It's, it's found in Mark chapter 3, verse 31 through uh, 34. But I'm only going to read verses 33 through 35. And it reads like this. Who, uh, uh, he, he, says, he says, who are my brother, who is my mother, who are my mother and my brothers? Just Jesus asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here is my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my, my brother and sister and mother. Now, whether Mary, whether Mary understood uh, Jesus' mission, Jesus' mi uh, uh, ministry, we do not know. But we do know that here in this passage, she interrupted him while he was uh, uh, ministering to uh, the crowds. And so she, interrupting Jesus uh, uh, in, in this context here, uh, we could uh, uh, walk away by saying that she interrupted Jesus while he was doing what he was called to do. And so uh, we could say that Mary made a mistake. Mary uh, uh, chose to do something that wasn't perfect. Now that is not to say that Mary uh, uh, did anything out of line and where uh, it was sinful. But yet we see here that Mary asked Jesus to do something or, 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 or sent a word to Jesus that he, she was looking for him. And so again, the point I'm trying to make here is that in both, both uh, incidents, uh, uh, at the wedding with the wine, turning the water into wine or uh, asking that Jesus would do something. And, and then here where she's looking for Jesus while Jesus is uh, ministering to the crowds. And in both cases, we see that Mary uh, chose the wrong time to come to Jesus. And so I want to speak to the mothers today who perhaps uh, feel that uh, you've let your children down, that perhaps uh, you've made the wrong decisions uh, for your children. I, I want to encourage you by letting you know that those things that perhaps may look like mistakes, God has used it for the good. Yes, God has used it for the good. We see here in both of these uh, accounts that God used uh, Mary coming to Jesus and asking Jesus uh, to do something about the fact that the wine had run out and Jesus turns the water into wine. And so God used the situation as Jesus uh, exclaimed, he said to his mother, he says, my time has not yet come, yet God the Father used it for the good. The other incident here is where uh, uh, Jesus says, who, is, who are my mother and my brothers? In other words, uh, here Jesus was around a crowd and Mary comes looking for Jesus, but yet Jesus uses it for a lesson, uses it for a lesson. So what we see here is that all things are working out for the good. What we see is that even in the mistakes as we would perceive it, even in the mistakes that perhaps you have made, I want to tell you this morning that God has a purpose behind every action that you have made. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. So I ask you this question. Have you made mistakes as a mother? Sure you have. But that is not the end of your call to motherhood. You see, the title here is Motherhood, A Lifelong Call. A lifelong call from God. And so you have been called of God to be a mother for your whole lifetime. It does not change. It does not change. You will certainly make a mistake or two today. You will make a mistake uh, tomorrow. And you will continue to make mistakes. But that does not change who you are. That does not change your calling. Like Mary, God knew when he called her to a lifelong call to motherhood that she would make these, uh, these exact mistakes. He knew everything that Mary would do. He knew that Mary wasn't qualified in the world's eyes, but he knew that he was calling her and that he was going to qualify her. She made mistakes. We all make mistakes. But God will use 
everything for the good, to accomplish His purpose. And so I want to encourage you with the same words. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And so, again, I want to I wanna repeat that because I want to make sure that if you feel like you have fallen short, if you feel like you have not been the best mother this morning, I want to encourage you by letting you know that God is still uh, happy with you. God still is pleased with how you have mothered your child. Could it have been better? Maybe. Maybe. But let us also consider circumstances. Let us consider circumstances. As we look at Mary, we look at the circumstance, the, 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 the reasons why Mary uh, uh, made the request that she made at the wedding, we must understand that there was a reason why she asked. She asked because the wine, uh, there was no more wine. And so she made a request and she relied upon her son. Amen. And so again, I want to encourage you this morning, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. He still loves you. And He will use even your mistakes to cause all things to work for good according to His purposes. God knew that Mary wasn't always uh, going to do the right things. But she was the perfect woman to raise Jesus God didn't choose anyone else. Uh, notice in the story where, where the angel comes to Mary and says to Mary that, that uh, her relative Elizabeth was also pregnant right now and that she was six months along. I find it interesting that it wasn't Elizabeth who God chose to give birth to Jesus. It wasn't Mary that God chose to give birth to John. To John. God knew what he was doing. God knew the mother that he was choosing to raise the child that he was going to give to them. And so I say to you this morning, the child that you were given was for you. God gave you that child to raise that child. Why? Because he saw that you were the perfect mother to raise that child. And so as we finish that point there, I want to give you another hashtag. And the hashtag is motherhood is not always perfect. Motherhood is not always perfect. Or better said, motherhood is not a call to perfection. Motherhood is not a call to perfection. In John, uh, John 19.25, I want to read there for a moment. As we consider our final point, and that is that motherhood is a lifelong calling from God. So let's let's recap here. So the first thing to, to understand is that motherhood is a is a call to servanthood. And number two, motherhood is not always perfect or better said, motherhood is not a call to perfection. And so and our, our third point here is motherhood is a lifelong calling from God. Look with me, if you will, if you have your Bibles with you, John chapter 19, starting with verse 25. It says here, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of uh, Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman. Notice how he says woman again. This is, again, this is showing honor for his mother when he calls her woman. Today, it may uh, mean something else, but uh, in the context here, it was Jesus showing uh, honor and respect to his mother. He says, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, so here he, he's saying, woman, here is your son. He is now looking at, at Mary and at looking at John. And he's saying to, to Mary, he says, he says, here is your son. And to the, the disciple, and he, so he says, sir, here is your son. And, and to the disciple, here is your mother. So he says to, to, to Mary, here is your son. And here is your mother to John. From that time on, the, the, the Bible says, this disciple took her into his home. So here... 
we see that as Jesus is, is, is nailed to the cross, we find that Mary is near the cross of Jesus standing there, standing there by his side. And Jesus makes sure that his mother is taken care of. And so I want to speak to, uh, quickly if I can, to uh, children. I want to speak to, to all of you who have been born of a mother. Amen. I want to remind you that it is your calling to look after your mother. Even as you leave this earth, it is your calling. God has called you to take care of your mother. Now, that, that may look different for you than it does for me. But the matter of the fact is that you were called to take care of your mother. This is why here we see that Jesus looks to Mary and she, she, he says to Mary, Mary, Mom, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm leaving, I, I, I'm not, I can't be around anymore. I must die this awful death. I will be buried. I will uh, then again come out of the grave three days later. But then I have to leave and go sit at the right hand of the Father. But I'm not going to leave you without any support. What I find interesting is that at this point, Jesus has brothers. And the text doesn't tell us the reason why he chose not to uh, uh, encourage his brothers to take care of Mary, but he looked to John. And here he looks to John and he says, John, here is your mother. And John, as a good disciple, the text says that from that time on, he took her into his home. This is amazing. Mothers are to be taken care of. They have a high calling upon their lives. And so we, the children of all the mothers that are in this world, are to take care of them. They took care of us. They spent hours without sleep in order that we would be in our cribs, in, our, in comfort, that our stomachs were, were filled, that our diaper was dry. And then all the pain and suffering that they endured as we grew up. And, 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 and today some still experience pain. We are to honor our mothers. We are to respect our mothers. And the way that we show honor and the way that we show respect is by taking care of them. I want us to notice that Mary is here standing at the foot of the cross. And here she fell down to the depths there, moaning and wailing and, be, and begging the God of heaven to stop her hell on earth. As I thought about Mary standing there and watching her son tortured, his beard pulled from his face, his face spat upon, as he hung there and his back was rubbing against this rough uh, uh, cross. And as his wounds from the flogging opened up in the pain that she saw in his eyes and yet could not do anything. Oh, can you imagine the pain in a mother's heart? Can you imagine the pain that Mary felt? On that day as she stood next to the cross, looking up to her son. I, I, you know, I, I think about Simeon's prophecy at the birth of Jesus. And here, before Mary's eyes, it is being fulfilled. Yet, yet, despite the pain, Mary was there. Despite the pain, Mary was there. She was a mother from the beginning and a mother to the very end. It is a lifelong calling. As I thought of this, I also thought about mothers standing in the hallways of St. Jude's Hospital right now. I thought of mothers standing in the hallways 
of the children's hospitals around the country. I thought about the mothers standing at the graveside of their children. Motherhood is from beginning to end. And so as, as I thought about these mothers, my heart was filled with pain, with sorrow. As I thought about these mothers, there are mothers right now who are standing on the other side of a wall speaking to their children as they go to visit them in prison. But where is mom? Mom is there. Showing love to their child. No matter how rebellious, no matter how perfect, it doesn't matter. Motherhood is a call, lifelong call. And so I thought about mothers today as I considered Mary and I, Mary and I thought about her journey through life as she raised Jesus and as she raised also her other sons. And I couldn't help but think of the mothers today. Mothers are called to be servants of the Lord, even if their children are rebellious, even if their children are harsh, even if their children are cruel. A mother's heart may ache, but she has said in her heart, I am the Lord's servant. So I want to speak to all children today, young and old, and that is that whatever you have done to your mother, Whatever pain you have caused her to experience, I want you to know that she is still your mother. She still loves you. She is able to look beyond your mistakes. She's able to look beyond your shortcomings. Why? Because she is your mother. I also want you to know that Jesus Christ, He did not count our sins against us. So here's a picture of, of a mother. Jesus chose not to count our sins against us, but he was willing to lay down his life for us. And so mothers are the same way. Mothers don't, don't look at how well you have been, but they look at the fact that they carried you for nine months in their womb. And that one day, when they gave birth to you, they were able to hold you and on that day, they knew that they were the Lord's servant and that they were to serve the Lord by raising you for the rest of their lives. Motherhood is a sacrificial and painful call to servanthood. With this call, He gives you hearts that love deeply. Hands that serve tirelessly. And a vision to see His blossoming image in the precious ones He entrusted you to care for. Therefore, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. So the hashtag here is, motherhood is a lifelong calling from God. Motherhood is a lifelong calling from from God. I want to play for you the uh, poem once again. And then after that, we'll go ahead and uh, worship one more time. And then we'll come back and pray. And uh, I'll pray a blessing over uh, moms today. And, and then we'll go ahead and close our service. Let us play the poem. Motherhood is more than a stage. It's a lifelong calling from God. With it, he gives us hearts that love deeply. Hands that serve tirelessly. And vision to see his blossoming image in the precious ones entrusted to our care. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives 
for our brothers and sisters. Therefore, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people.
Tell the world of the treasure you found Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I pray that you were blessed today with today's uh, message. I want to remind you once again that motherhood is a call to servanthood. And that motherhood is a call not, not to perfection. And that motherhood is a lifelong calling. I want to thank you all for joining uh, me this morning. Uh, I pray uh, you were blessed, and if you were blessed, uh, I think this message would be a perfect gift for your mother uh, that you can send to her and bless her heart today. Amen. Let us go ahead and pray, um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, also pray a blessing over all the mothers today. Let's pray uh, for the mothers first, and then we'll go ahead and close. Father, we just thank you, Lord, today. We thank you for the mothers today, Lord. We thank you for every mother. And Lord, we pray that that they were, would be encouraged today, Father God, in knowing that you have chosen them to mother the children that you have given to them, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you have found favor, Father God, uh, that they have found favor, Father God, and in, in, in that you have chosen them and that you have blessed them and that you will continue to bless them, Father God. I pray, Father God, if there's uh, a child, Lord, a wayward child, Father God, that today you would touch them, Lord, and that you would draw them back home and that they would be reconciled to their mother, Father God. Lord, I thank you for choosing Mary to bring Jesus Christ into this world that he might die on a cross in our place, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and how you uh, planned it and how you carried all of this out, Father God. I pray, Lord, that as we close today, Lord, Lord, that we would be reminded of the gift that you gave to the world through a woman who most may say, even today, Father God, was not qualified, but you called her and you qualified her to raise your son the one who would take away the sins of the world, the perfect Lamb of God. And so we thank you this morning for that, Lord. Lord, now as we close, we ask, Lord, that you would bless all the mothers and that you would bless everyone, Father God, as we continue to celebrate Mother's Day on this day. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Thank you once again for tuning in, and we'll see you again uh, next Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know. Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know.